Hey, welcome back. My name is Kedron Rhodes. Thanks for swinging by this channel. This is where I help leaders innovate by design. David Meister wrote this really great book called The True Professional. And in it, he talks about how, how individuals judge or evaluate their leaders. And he describes four aspects that kind of define uh, the criteria or the qualities that we look for in leaders and we'll judge individuals through these, through these lenses. As I was reading the book, it struck me as, as not only really helpful, the book is, you know, it's 20 years old, maybe it's not new, but as I was reading it, I couldn't help but be reminded of a, a recent Gallup study titled like The State of American Managers, where it kind of quantifies all of the, uh, of the implications of good management has on an organization. What kind of talent is involved? What kind of impact does it have on the business? That sort of thing. So what I thought it'd be interesting to do is to see how David's rubric kind of aligns with Gallup's research. And, and, and I was surprised at how much overlap they are, especially on these, on, on these lenses that David describes as, as, as ways to judge leadership. And then on the capabilities or the talents that Gallup identified as being part of effective management. So we're gonna look at these four lenses from David and these five capabilities from Gallup that, and, and see where they overlap. But why should you even care? Well, Gallup states in their research that one in two people leave a job in order to get away from their manager. And if you think about leaving a job, it's one of the most disruptive things you could possibly do with your life. It changes, the, changes almost every aspect of your daily life. This is a really big deal. You, you'll <clears throat> often hear uh, that the, the notion described as people leave their managers, they don't leave jobs. Well, Gallup's research pretty much proves that it's true. At least one or two of us have actually done that which is really alarming. And if you are a leader, you should be paying attention to these kinds of statistics because these are a reflection of you. These are a reflection of us in leadership that are trying, that are trying to keep teams together. If you're the type of person that that's, hears a statistic like that and says, well, people aren't, I don't have a lot of turnover, so I must be a good leader. Well, let's, let's just take a quick time out there and Let's not judge the quality of our leadership by the most traumatic thing or the traumatic outcome of poor leadership. That's not a benchmark for how well we're doing, right? Uh, so if you don't have a lot of turnover, that doesn't mean you're a good leader. That just, that's, they're, they're separate. That's a different idea. If you do have a lot of turnover as a leader, there's something to pay attention to here. So let me give you these first four things that David describes as, as how the team evaluates you as a leader. And then we'll look at Gallup's research and see how they kind of overlap. So the four things that, that David describes are, the first one is your motives. Second is your values. Third is your competencies. And the fourth is your style. Pretty straightforward. So the first one is motives. And the way that David describes this is, uh, are you perceived as someone who's looking out for the interest of the team and the organization, or are you perceived as someone who's just looking out for yourself? Pretty straightforward. So putting the team and the company above yourself. Second one is values. And these are, do you reflect the values of the organization? Do you reflect the values of your discipline or craft? Um, each of each of us that, that come from a particular discipline, whether it's healthcare or whether it's automotive or whether it is software, whether it is um, distribution, like those industries have a collective set of values. Do you embody those? Do you advocate for them? Do you advocate for the health of the industry as a whole? The third area is competencies. And this is essentially, can you get stuff done? Do you have good ideas and can you actually execute on them? And the fourth one is style. Are you able to, uh, motivate and inspire the team around you. So as I was reading the book and also reading through the assessment from Gallup and their research, I couldn't help but see how the, these four things overlap considerably with the five different 
capabilities or skills that Gallup identified in really top tier management. Gallup identifies in their research that managers who are not engaged or, or who are actively disengaged in work are costing the U.S. economy between 319 and almost $400 billion annually. That's pretty significant. That's the kind of economic impact that crummy leadership has, crummy management has. And through their research, they identify that really about one in 10 managers actually have what it takes to be really high-performing man managers. Out of that 10%, they identified five characteristics that really set those managers apart. And I think they map really well to what David was describing 20 plus years ago in his book, True Professional. So one of the ideas that they surfaced is, are the decisions made for productivity or are they made for politics? This to me feels like falls right in that motives camp. Are you making the decisions for your team in order to posture yourself within the organization? Or are, you making sure, or are you making your decisions for the team in order to move the agenda forward? That was one of the critical things that Gallup pulled out. So the second one is clear accountability. And the third one is a, speaks to the relationships of the team. Is there trust? Is there open dialogue? And is there transparency? Those ideas to me fit firmly within what David describes as values. Do you have a clear method of accountability for your team? Do you have open dialogue? Are you building emotionally safe place where people feel trusted and there's transparency? So clear accountability, trust dialogue, and transparency to me fit right in that, that bucket of values. So the fourth capability that Gallup identified in, in really effective managers is the ability to drive forward, get around obstacles, and get through resistance. And of course, this fits squarely right in this notion of uh, competency. As a leader, can you see around the corner? Can you see around the obstacle? Can you uh, work your way over and through resistance? Those are marks of an effective and exceptionally effective um, leader. The fourth one is, can you motivate towards a common mission or vision? This one, of course, fits square, squarely within style that David talked about. David talked about style as ability to motivate, ability to coach. Um, so as a leader, can you see where your team is struggling and can you inspire them to take that next step? Are you capable of casting that vision for the team that is compelling and draws them out and pulls the best out of them to contribute to a common cause? Critical aspect of being a good leader. So I found this really fascinating, these four categories that David talked about 20 plus years ago, matched so closely to what it means to be an effective manager, according to Gallup's research, 20 years later. So I think there's some truth there. Some of these truths just carry through, not because industry demands them, but because people are people. These are ways in which we interact with each other. So, so before you tap out here, it is really easy to hear these things like, oh yeah, motivation, um, values, competence, and style. Of course those align well with uh, things like productivity over politics and being able to motivate a team towards a common vision and, and making sure your team is safe and there's open dialogue and, and that you have clear accountability. Yeah, though it feels so obvious that yes, those are the things we should absolutely be caring about. But that's the danger in hearing them is that yes, they sound so true. Yes, of course they're true, that's so obvious. Yes, why are you telling me this? But here's the thing, one out of two people leave a job because of their boss. If it is so obvious that these are how our teams judge us, then clearly we're not delivering on this. The challenge is how do we translate a concern, these are things that I'm concerned about, into care. So these are things that I actively care for and about. Here's the deal with leadership. It is not enough to have good intentions. It is not enough to be concerned about these ideas. It is our job as leaders, hear me on this. It is our job to create proof points because our team do not judge us by our intentions. 
They judge us by our actions. They judge us by the proof that we put into the universe. They judge us by the proof, our actions, that they observe. Your intent means nothing. Your actions are the only thing that counts. So as a leader, it's our job to create proof points. Every single day, it's our job to create proof that this is what we care about. How do I know you care? Because my actions speak directly to the things I care about. If my actions aren't harmful, but they aren't aligned with caring for these aspects, then you can easily deduce that you, you don't care. Your actions are the only proof that you have with your team. Let that sink in. It's our job every single day to create proof of the things that we care for and the things that we value. My hope is that you can take some of these ideas and apply them to your team and start generating proof, proof points of like, here's what I can point to that says I value transparency. Here's the things that I can point to that says my motivations are for the organization and not for myself. And here's the things that I can point to that say here's my values are aligned to these industry standards. If you find this helpful, hit subscribe and smash the like button. I'd appreciate it. Share it with a friend. And as always, I look forward to having these conversations with you down the road.